right. We are here for part two of this week's Yawa. Let's go ahead and answer some questions. Speaking of questions, we didn't mention this in the first part, but how we're pulling all of these questions are from YouTube, folks. Yeah, so in the comments. Yeah, throw them in the comments and get your buddies to throw some extra thumbs up on them because those are typically the ones that we're able to pull out and say, ah, lots of people want to see the answer to this question, so let's answer it. Throw at the top, Yawa question, type out your question, however long it may need to be, and we will do our best to include it in next week's Yawa. So this first question here is from Charmaine Lewis. I have a four and a half month old black lab. He is extremely session smart. Mm -hmm. He's about the same age as Clutch, I think, right now. We tried, close. we tried the e-collar twice to place train and he just runs and hides and then refuses to even eat. We really want more consistent behavior from him. What is the next step? So session smart dogs is a real problem. Yeah. And we talk about generalizing training with actually clutch in a recent video that we did. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's really important to utilize training and training sessions in different areas of your house, in different, um, environments at different times, uh, you know, work through a few things now, then give him a break and then work through a few things later. So he doesn't think that, Oh, I only have to listen and focus during a training session. The other side of things is, um, your puppy's response to the e-collar definitely isn't what we would expect out of a puppy that's ready for collar conditioning and how you handled the training session. Obviously we didn't get to see that training session. Speaking of which. Mm. Just, just throwing this out there. I don't mean to cut you off, but just search standing stone on YouTube. This is like to find this video standing stone session, smart dog. And it'll pop up first video right there with clutch. And we talk about the, the process of generalizing. So. Thank you, producer. Ah. Now, getting back to the fact that we didn't actually get to see your training session, which would be very, very beneficial for us to do that. Uh, Some places that you can reach out to us is on our online dog training community on Patreon. It's a big one for that, yeah. Especially because our eyes and being able to read the situation is our most powerful tool for giving you guys specific feedback and advice. So seeing what's actually going on with your four and a half month old lab instead of us making assumptions would be really beneficial. So check us out on Patreon if you still need more help. But we've, well, we've seen firsthand, a guy said this clicker training stuff, it doesn't work. I don't understand what's going on. Dog doesn't get it. And I said, okay, well, send me a video of what's going on. Well, his timing was completely off. And I said, fix your timing. Boom. It works. He said, this clicker training stuff is the best stuff in the whole world when you know how to do it. So it's simple, simple things of him explaining he's doing everything right, even though he doesn't know what he's doing isn't right. Yeah. And just sometimes getting the justification that what you're doing is right, or just that little nudge to say, hey, keep doing what you're doing. You're going to get there. Mm -hmm. Don't give up. Don't quit. Don't let your puppy think that they can get out of this. And that's something that we sometimes see with people that are starting that collar conditioning introduction, whether it's for recall or place training, where they put the collar on the puppy, the vibrate starts and the puppy goes, whoa, 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 wait, what is that? I'm so unsure. I don't know what to do. The really cool thing is when you search standing stone session, smart dog, the second video that pops up is Teaching a stubborn dog to come, guaranteed, which is where we talk about a specific dog that has this same bolting type, avoiding type tendencies. And we show in 14 minutes and 29 seconds exactly how to work through this. Yeah. And typically the answer is to have the dog clipped up to a check cord so that they Mm -hmm. can't avoid, they can't escape, they can't run and hide. And you can keep them and redirect their focus to what you're asking. So that would be my first recommendation is to throw a lead or a check cord on your puppy when you're doing your next place training session. And then the vibrate isn't going to hurt your puppy. It isn't going to, um, do anything detrimental to your puppy. And they need to understand that the way that it shuts off is not by running and hiding, not by freaking out, not by doing any of that, but by complying with something that they already know how to do. Build the momentum of that training session up first by using, you know, your kibble and your training session and your clicker, and then transition to overlaying with the e-collar. So I want to talk about something really cool in in regards to this specifically. We mentioned in the first part, if you haven't seen that yet, go back and watch it or uh, find the questions. 
excuse me, listen to it. We're changing things around a little bit, but listen to it. We talk about specifically, if you aren't learning, you aren't trying. I said that. Okay. So I was watching a video, um, while listening to on our drive, a video that was by Bob at Lone Duck. We've mentioned him a couple of times on our channel. He's a good friend and a great dog trainer. And this is uh, it was a video about collar conditioning. It was called collar conditioning talk part two or something. Right. And then I know a fair amount about collar conditioning, but the thing that I picked up from his video was an explanation that it was just, you know, somebody has a different spin on how to explain it and it makes more sense. With dogs that have this issue, you think about when you start teaching basic behaviors with clicker training or positive reinforcement, how quickly they pick up on it, right? So you click once, you click again, you click again, and then all of a sudden they're just sitting, boom, 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 boom. They get it that fast, right? So you have to think about the same thing in regards to the negative reinforcement aspect of things. It's reinforcement, so you're going to end up building behaviors. Strengthening which we will, those behaviors. We'll talk about this later because I think there's yes. another question about this. So spoiler alert. But um your any reinforcement based training is to is designed to strengthen behaviors, both positive and negative reinforcement. So anyhow, he said, think about, you know, the dog does something, the wrong behavior, the wrong reaction in regards to the e collar, whether that's yipping and he, he goes I I died every time he's like, yep, that. So anyhow, um, they make some vocalization. It's not ideal, but if you let off in that situation, they learn vocalization is what shut that off very, very quickly, just as fast as they learned those new behaviors using positive reinforcement, or if they learn to bolt, or if they learn to hide at the truck, or if they learn to avoid by by freezing or hiding behind yeah. you or going between your legs, all of these things, if you shut the collar off, they just learned that was what turned it off. And they learned that very, very fast. Especially, Two or three reps, it sounds like. Especially when it's their own idea. That's the most yeah. powerful thing. That's why we talk about free shaping with positive reinforcement. It's essentially what you're doing is free shaping with negative reinforcement I don't know if that's exactly a thing, but it's pretty dang close. I'm sure close. some behavioralist, socialist, something or other will I would correct like, us. Yeah, well, I'd like the explanation of what it would be technically considered, but it's allowing the dog to make up their mind of what they want to do, and it shuts off the negative reinforcement, and then the dog goes, that was the answer, so they're going to try it again. And if you give into that again or you allow that again, you're essentially marking again, yep, that was right. You're reinforcing that try behavior, it again. and you're strengthening yeah. that that's the behavior that they're going to exhibit, not the ultimate going on to their dog bed behavior that we're looking for. So if you are getting ready to collar condition or you're already struggling with these problems, you need to set yourself up for success. And watching that second video that I talked about there um, is going to make a big difference. Prepare yourself ahead of time that your dog may potentially have an adverse reaction and then you'll know how to handle it. Yeah. And we have people that a lot of times reach out to us on Patreon and are saying, Hey, I'm going to start this. And I always recommend, Hey, Throw an, you know, check cord on your puppy before you start this. No, we don't know if they're going to have an adverse reaction. We don't know that they're not going to immediately come to us. But if they do try and hide, you're prepared for it. So Mm -hmm. we don't allow them to get out of it even one time. Sounds like a total Patreon plug, but one of the most recent people, these are just, I mean, these are just actual Real life examples that we see all the time. So don't feel alone, but I was watching a training session because we have a tier that actually allows you to do video chats with me. I sit and watch your training sessions. And in that session, she was like, I don't know what to do. He's not coming to the dog bed and he's holding down vibrate on the collar. I said, well, don't let it off. I was able to coach through that in one short session. We got the response we were looking for as opposed to her trying it a few times and then saying, hey, this is what's going on. Now, now. I shot a video of what's what do going we do? on. Yeah. yeah. So, so we were able to do well, Ethan was able to help through that session in the first go around and not allow that puppy to understand that there was an alternative option. Yeah. It was an absolutely great question. Great question. Great question.